Hello everyone, it is Thursday of week two of Advent, and that means if you are lighting candles, you are going to light that second candle again, okay? Today we are going to continue our focus in on joy, and we are going to look at how Jesus brought joy to people during his ministry, as well as after he ascended to heaven. And so that's what we're going to look at. There could be a ton of things I could have picked, guys. We could have been here for weeks, okay? I picked a few that kind of had different qualities, and hopefully they're a good representation of, of all of them. But um, I will try to not go too quickly, but there's a lot here, so let's dig in. We're going to start with Mark chapter 7, verses 32 to 37. Here we go. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears, and after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephaphtha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Okay, so Jesus very literally and physically healed this man. It wasn't a metaphor. He really healed him. The man was deaf and he had a speech impediment. And Jesus made it so that he could hear with his ears and speak plainly so everyone could understand him. This, by the way, is a fulfillment of prophecy from the Old Testament. Always like to point it out since it's the Advent season. <laughs> but our focus here is joy. And that's what we're going to focus in on. So this physical healing meant so much to this man and to the people who were with him that despite Jesus telling them to keep it quiet, don't tell anybody, they did it anyway. They did it even though he repeatedly told them, please don't tell anybody. <laughs> and they proclaimed it so much that their testimonies revealed to other people what Jesus had done. Their joy in the healing, the physical healing, led them to tell other people about what Jesus had done. And so when we reflect on things like this in our life, you know, have we shared that joy of healing with other people when we have had cancer or a relative has had cancer and God worked through the doctors or worked through medicine or worked through whatever it is to bring that person out of cancer? Did we share that joy with others? Did we give God the glory for that? Those are what we're talking about here. Physical healing. Jesus brought physical healing to physical bodies that resulted in joy that spread the word about Jesus. And so we have to look at ourselves and say, have we shared our joy with physical healing, right? With, with these safe things. Have we shared it with others so that they can see how great our God is? So let's look at another way that Jesus brought joy to others aside from physical healing. We're going to be in Luke 8, 1 through 3. Soon afterward, he, Jesus, went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's household manager, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their means. Okay, so here we see... Jesus healing people with demons. I couldn't quite classify this totally physical or totally spiritual because it kind of has both elements in it, okay? Um, they were physically possessed by demons. However, demons are of the spiritual nature, so this one kind of had a weird place, so it gets its own little spot. Now, these were not the only people that Jesus uh, drove demons out of, okay? But what I wanted to focus in on here is... Um, the actions of these people. So although it doesn't explicitly say, and these people had joy, we can see that they had to have had joy in order to do what they were doing. So what were they doing? These women had been healed. And the joy of their healing caused them to provide for him and the disciples. So whether that was money or clothing or food, in some capacity, they provided for the needs of Jesus and his disciples. 
and their joy in their healing also caused them to follow Jesus. We know that Mary Magdalene was very close to Jesus and the disciples, and she was frequently where he was teaching. Um, so the joy of her healing, I mean, seven demons, that's a lot of demons, guys. I mean, she had to have been very tormented. Um, and we see that she followed him and these other women also followed him and provided out of their own, uh, monies, their own household monies, right. To, to keep these, these people fed and clothed and, and all of that. So that joy of their healing again, led to action. It's not the same kind of action, action, right? We don't, um, we don't see, uh, that they go out and spread the gospel themselves. They may have, we don't really know. Uh, but we do know that they made sure that the person who, who was the savior was able to go tell everybody else, right? He didn't have any need for food or clothing or, or whatever it was that they were providing. And so again, their joy initiated a response. Okay. And so that's what they did. So now moving into the spiritual side, we did physical, we did kind of uh, in between, (laughs) and now we hit to the spiritual element. What does Jesus do for our souls to bring us joy? And for that, we're actually going to look at the chapter of Acts 8, not the full chapter, but a lot of it. So two spots. The first one is Acts 8, 4 through 8. Okay. Now those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. And the crowds with one accord paid attention to what was being said by Philip. When they heard him and saw the signs that he did, for unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who had them, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in that city. Okay. So here, Philip is one of the disciples of Jesus. Jesus has already gone back to heaven, okay? And persecution happens and the disciples are scattered and Philip ends up in Samaria, okay? Now we could have a whole lesson about Samaria, but that's another day. So here he is and he's going to these people and he's preaching to them the gospel. Now, why are they paying attention? They're paying attention because of what he's saying plus what he's doing. So he's he, through the name of Jesus, is healing people physically, he's driving out demons, and then he's giving them the gospel. Now, we know he's doing this through the name of Jesus because um, in other places in the Bible, it talks about how people couldn't do it. And Jesus says, because it's me that does it, not you, and you have to be doing it in my name. And so we know that Philip uh, you know, is praying in Jesus' name and that Jesus is working through Philip to heal these people and to rid them of demons. Now, because of those signs, people are listening to the gospel, okay? So the things that he was doing, the actions Philip was taking was pointing people towards Jesus. And then he was able to tell them about who Jesus was and they were paying attention. So the, the, his actions caused them to pay attention to his words. And with his words, he shared them with them, the gospel, the joy of Jesus. And that basically created so many believers and it literally says there was much joy in that city, right? So the city was full of joy because people were coming to Christ. So are we showing others the gospel through our lives? Are our lives beacons that point to Jesus? You know, when we're having hard times and people see in us a joy, do they go, why do you have so much joy? And when they do, are we pointing them to Jesus? You know, showing them this is Jesus and this is what he's done for me. And so I know he's going to walk with me through this and that he's there, right? Can people look at us and see that we have joy when it seems like we shouldn't? And when they notice, are we pointing them to Jesus? Okay, those are things that we can ponder upon because what Jesus has done for us is enough to give us a lot of joy. So let's look a little bit further into that. We're going to move a little further down in the same chapter, Acts 8, to read about Philip and an Ethiopian eunuch. And this, you guys, you probably hear me say this all the time. It's one of my favorite stories, right? Um, Everything's my favorite. I get it. (laughs) But um, we don't hear a lot about this account in Acts, and I love to go over it. So let's do that. Acts 8, 26 through 40. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, 
Rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, Go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, Do you understand what you're reading? And he said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does this prophet say this, about himself or someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Okay, so... This is a, a kind of a lot to take in. We're going to focus in on joy though, okay? So here we have an angel telling Philip, go down there on that road from Jerusalem to Gaza. And it's a desert. I've been there. It's very deserty. Um, and so he comes across an Ethiopian eunuch who works for Queen Candace of the Ethiopians. Now he was coming to Jerusalem to worship. Okay, and so we can assume here that he is of Jewish background and there is a, a Jewish um, group in Ethiopia even today. And so this does not uh, seem weird, although a lot of people probably don't know it. He was in charge of all her treasure. Well, Philip went over to the chariot and of course the guy says, come in and he's reading of all things Isaiah, right? And this scripture uh, is talking exactly about Jesus and what happened with the crucifixion. And so the, the eunuch turns to Philip and is like, what is this? Who's this about? Is, is it about him? Is it about somebody else? And so Philip is able to tell him about Jesus and how he died. He was resurrected and, and all of the stuff, right? And he can relate it to exactly what this man was reading. This gentleman was so overwhelmed with what Philip had told him. He had so much joy in his heart that he immediately wanted to be baptized. He's like, look, here's water. Now let me tell you, in the desert, there's not a lot of water. So it probably wasn't huge. <laughs> um, but they went in and got baptized in this water because the eunuch was so joyous about the fact that this had come to fruition. And of course, um, that he, he was able to have eternal life because Philip would have taken him all the way through that um, you know, the, the part in Isaiah says his life was taken away from the earth, but then Philip could tell him, and after that, he rose himself up from the dead and we can be saved from what we deserve, hell, right? We can be saved from hell by believing in him. And so the eunuch was so just joyous about this that he wanted to be baptized immediately. So again, we see that the joy of the gospel, the joy of Jesus leads us to action, okay? It, it's what motivates us, right? And it, it's what just really fuels our, our faith, right? Is this joy. And so um, as followers of Jesus, we have this joy. And, you know, we, we might maybe who are further along in our faith, who've, who've been believers longer, maybe we don't express it as exuberantly, but that joy's still there. Much like romantic love, right? When you're dating, you express your love a lot different than when you're married 40 years. Does that mean the love has gone away? No, the love has grown and our joy can grow, but it might um, manifest differently, right? Some periods of our lives that that joy may just be overflowing and uh, in other times, it may be uh, an ember within us, but the joy always fuels our faith 
into action because we just can't help it. <laughs> and we want other people to have this joy too. And so, you know, are we experiencing this joy in Jesus? You know, we have to remember joy, like love, is not always a feeling, okay? Um, it, we describe it in feelings <laughs> because it's hard not to, but it's really resting in Jesus and, and knowing he's there and just the gratitude that we have for what he's done for us and the love that, that we experience because of it, right? This is all wrapped up in the joy. And we can see that in all of these accounts, right? But joy brings us closer to God, closer to Jesus, um, and it fuels our faith in that direction. You know, that, that fuel may push us to evangelize, like it did with uh, some of these people. It may fuel us to support a ministry like it did with uh, Mary Magdalene and some of those other ladies. It may fuel us into action, like baptize me right now. <laughs> it may fuel us into deeper study. Um, you know, it manifests so differently, but it's that joy that, that pushes us to do these things to follow Jesus and to want to be close in relationship with him and to want others to join us in that. And so that's kind of our focus of joy. I know that was a lot in a very quick amount of time. Um, like I said, there's so much that we can look at here. And, you know, I encourage anybody as you go through uh, the New Testament, reading about Jesus's ministry and uh, through Acts and Romans and, and, and other letters where we see the um, the apostles going out and, and doing things is to look and see what are the indications of joy here because you know that that anytime somebody's healed physically spiritually or in betweenly <laughs> that that joy follows because that's that's a natural um, expression of of gratitude and excitement and happiness and um, anyway so. Hopefully that resonated with you and gave you some things to ponder upon. And let's go ahead and close out with prayer. Dear Jesus, we just come to you today um, so grateful of what you have brought to the world, both during your ministry and, of course, after when you um, ascended. And Lord, we just want to thank you so much for saving us. And we just ask that help us... Help us to express our joy. Help us to use the joy that you give us to share the gospel with others. And Lord, when things get hard, we just ask you to um, remind us of the joy that we have in you because sometimes uh, we can forget it and we can kind of squelch it um, because of what's going on. We just ask that you remind us of that joy to light that fire within us so that we can, um, we can remember it and sh again, share it with others and rest in it. And we can use it to fuel our relationship to be closer with you. Lord, please um, be with us as we study joy this week and bring all those things to memory as we are going through your word. And Lord, just thank you for everything. In your name we pray. Amen.